Welcome back to ZM Jack. Today we got Gunslinger Suicidal Prison. I'm pushing the I'm pushing the KF2 recording times a little bit a little bit hard lately. I keep I keep doing it later and later, and uh, it's definitely it's definitely not sustainable because <laughs> it's uh, it's quarter to six right now. This episode this episode has to go live in like two two hours and fifteen minutes, right? So I have to record this episode, the next episode, upload them, make the thumbnails, all that. Like, it'll be done in time. I'll, I'll have time to spare, even. But, uh, you know, if something went wrong, it would be, uh, no, ep no episode in time. It'd be late. And I, I don't mind being late. I mean, I'd rather not be late, you know? I, I, I mind being late. But, uh, ultimately, if I'm, like, even, you know, stuff hits the fan, and I'm like two hours late. Like that's fine as long as the episode still goes live, right? The the important thing to me is making sure the episodes are just being there in the first place, as a uh, as a personal thing. But uh, of course, having them on time is is also <laughs> very very nice. I know that uh, occasionally my videos get views right when they're launched, so presumably some people are uh, watching them shortly after they go live, so having a proper schedule is probably beneficial. But uh, I've been pushing the times further and further back, and it's not for a lack of wanting to do it. It's just, I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting a little bit too conceited with it. I'm getting a little bit too, uh, what's, what's the word? Actually, I have to pull my, my microphone has to get pulled down a little bit. I'm sorry. Just a little bit. Look at that. I think my voice should sound a little bit better now. I've uh, been a little bit too uh, full of myself lately. And uh, it's definitely getting to a point where soon it might cause some stress. Well, I'll put it that way. It's not at the point where I'm stressing about it yet, but uh, it's definitely not not super far off that. Um, so, I gotta, I gotta start making sure I record these early. I record the Gambajack tries in the morning. I should just record the KF2 episodes when I do that, honestly. Um, but I don't. <laughs> and I couldn't tell you why. It's just, uh, it's just habit at this point. Getting too much into the, the, the habit of things, letting things uh, happen just naturally, and not really focusing on it as much as I should be. I had a really weird dream last night, so, uh, it was about COVID, and, uh, like, when you got COVID, you had to be, like, taken to these, these special, like, volunteer houses, uh, where people would take care of you. It wasn't like you went to a hospital or anything like that, it was like, you got COVID, and then you'd go to, like, your neighbor's house, who happened to run, like, a, a COVID, um, like recovery center and uh, they'd have like one room designated to uh to covid patients uh so you'd, you'd go in the room and then you would you would like not leave you'd have like a you'd have your toilet your your sink you'd have everything you need to survive in that one room it's like a normal bedroom right like maybe 10 feet 15 feet squared kind of thing like not a not a particularly large room. It's it's a normal bedroom, and then you just got like a toilet, like a almost like a prison, but in somebody's house. And the only thing keeping you from leaving is a door that's like not even locked. Um. So anyway, I got COVID, and I was I was brought over there. And this is just, you know, this is normal. <laughs> so uh, I'm uh, I'm in the I'm in the the COVID recovery room, and I'm like, oh, well, I got to make sure I don't cough on things because I don't want to get anybody sick, you know. And, uh, just so weird. It was, it was such a weird dream. And, uh, like, for the first, like, when I got to the house in the first place, it was, uh, not even set up for me to be doing COVID. So, like, I, I was, as the COVID patient, helping them clean it to make it sanitary and stuff. And then I got, like, put into the, into the prison room, right? Uh, and oh, I can't remember it exactly, but I had uh, like I had my like my my sleepover bag packed, right? 
and in the uh, in the bag I had forgotten something. I can't remember what I forgot, but I definitely forgot something. So I had to like go back home and get it, because you know you can just do that when you're being restrained and, and, and imprisoned in this uh, COVID jail. Uh, and uh, so I got the the thing, whatever it was. I think it was like a phone charger or something. And I, I, I lay down on the floor next to the bed. Not on the bed, but on, on the floor next to the bed. Because, you know, that's 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 how you do it. <laughs> and uh, I'm just kind of lying there. And the TV's not working. I'm, I'm on the floor. I, can't, I shouldn't even be able to see the TV, but the TV's not working. So, I like fix it from my phone? I don't really understand how, but I, I fixed it from my phone and the TV's working. I don't watch TV. I don't know why I was... Like, honestly, if I was restrained and I had my phone... If I was, if I was like, locked in a, in a COVID jail or something and I had my phone, like, I wouldn't care for the TV. The TV would not be on. Or if it was, um... It wouldn't be playing TV, you know? It would, it would be playing YouTube or something. Um, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't care for TV. I don't. I don't care for it at all. Um, but anyway, so the trader pot is working. I uh, I fixed the TV from my phone, and I'm I'm continuing to lie down like next to the floor, and I have to get my pajamas on. And I'm like, oh crud! What pajamas am I supposed to wear when I'm in a COVID prison? So I'm like panicking about this, and I finally just put on some pajamas and. At that point, I woke up and I'm like, "What am I dreaming about? What is this? I have, I have, I have no, I have no clue what what it was, what it was really about. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it says something about me, but I don't, I don't really feel like it does. But it was the first dream I've had about COVID that I can remember. So that was uh, that was kind of cool. And it wasn't in like a. I don't know, it wasn't even a negative thing in the dream, right? Like, I had COVID, and I was being locked up in a COVID prison, and, uh, you know, that was that. I, I was like, yeah, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go have, like, a, a sleepover at the COVID prison, you know? Like, it was, it was, it was not a, a sad thing or, or a negative thing. It was exciting. Uh, I'm not sure why, but it was. Which was uh, quite strange, bizarre, one might say. Uh, so uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It was, it was, it was a bizarre dream. Then I woke up and uh, I recorded the Amatek tries because it was like 10 o'clock this morning or whatever. I uh, responded to some people on Discord. Then I went back to bed for like three hours. I slept a lot today. I slept a lot today. I woke up, recorded, and went, went right back to bed. I like I like those kinds of days though, honestly. When I uh, I get to do the split shift sleeping thing, I used to do that when I uh, when I delivered papers. Uh, I worked for the uh, the local paper delivery service, one of them anyway, and I would get up at yeah, usually around 2 a.m. 3 a.m. Uh, and I would go deliver the papers. It was like a two-hour walk to deliver the papers. Uh, and uh, then I would come back home. And after you go for like a two-hour walk, you're easily tired. Like, you know, it's it's 6, 7 a.m. in the morning at this point. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm tired, right? So I go back to bed. I get up around eh, usually 11 or 12-ish. And I would I would go about my day until usually around nine or ten ish, and then I would go back to bed, wake up at two a.m., go deliver the papers, and, and repeat the whole process. It was actually like a dream job of mine um, because it got me exercising. Like I lost a lot of weight in the uh, in the time I was uh, delivering the papers. I lost a ton of weight. 
because um, I was walking for like two hours carrying these giant bags and delivering the papers like it was a lot of work uh, and uh, I've ended up putting a lot of the weight back on but you know such is such is life we'll, uh, we'll, we'll make the, we'll get him another day um, anyway and I would I would do the split shift sleeps like that because uh, it was just the easiest way for me to do it because I didn't know when the papers would come exactly because they could come at 2 a.m. 3 a.m. or like 7 a.m. or whatever so but it was it was a dream job of mine because I got to, to go for a walk I got paid a livable wage it was uh, I didn't have to work with people I got to uh, I mean there was occasionally people as people complained or stood outside their houses or whatever but like it was just a good job the wage was pretty good for for what I enjoyed doing anyway I enjoyed doing it, but the, the thing that sucked is oftentimes the papers wouldn't even come until like 6 a.m. So I'd get up at 2 a.m. when they're supposed to be there, and then the papers wouldn't even be there until 6. And I'm like, well, I, I get the papers delivered, I come back home, and like it's really, really late now, and I can't really like sleep properly, and it's a bit of a pain in the ass. I would, I would probably try it again, maybe if I could get a job there again. Um, and uh, go about it a little bit differently because it was a really really good job but I need to have some way of knowing when it got when the papers were delivered to me because uh, with, with not knowing and having to like constantly keep checking and like watching and waiting for them to deliver it it was uh, kind of not acceptable anyway that's gonna do it for today thank you for watching remember to like the video if you like it subscribe to see more in the future comment if you have anything to say and I will see you next time bye bye